Welcome to Master Theris Uncut, where we discuss the issues others are too timid to discuss. And now, here's James Theris. Okay, welcome to another episode of Master Theris Uncut. Today I've got a special, special message for parents out there. Uh, even if you're not a parent, you're just an adult that's uh, maybe going to be a parent someday. I think you'll find that this is very useful information for you today. We'll probably keep things a little bit shorter today than normal. But today's topic is five ways improving your self-discipline can benefit your child. Now, I know you're probably thinking, what in the world is he talking about? How can my self-discipline have anything to do with benefiting my child? Well, I'm going to break that down for you a little bit today. I'm going to give you five ways. Really, it's like three and a half, but stretched into five. But uh, one thought building off of another. And I think you'll find this information very valuable, especially if you put it to use today. In, uh, at the end of the video today, I'm going to have give you a call to action. And if you're really serious about making this impact in your child's life, then you'll be one of the people on this call who takes the initiative to, to take me up on my call to action here. So what are the five things or what are the five ways that improving your self-discipline can benefit your child? Well, the first one is if you are working on your own self-discipline, you're going to inspire your child to do similar things. It's called leading by example. And that's a pretty self-explanatory, probably uh, uh, common sense thing. But I think it, it can never be reminded too often. So if you, if you work on your own self-discipline, you will inspire your child to do the same because they're going to see you doing things that you know you should be doing. That's really what self-discipline is, is doing the things you should be doing or not doing things you know you shouldn't be doing. So for adults, maybe there are some people that are watching the call that, that are smokers, and in the back of your mind, in your heart of hearts, you know you probably shouldn't be doing that activity uh, because, number one, it's expensive. Number two, it's, it's uh, dangerous to your health, and it's been proven many, many times over and that could shorten your lifespan and, and for, for probably 15 other reasons that we won't go into here. So you probably already know that that's not a great thing for you to be doing. However, are you still doing it? And what story are you telling yourself as to why it's important to continue doing it? So in order to, to stop doing that, you've got to find a better habit, such as chewing gum. That's a, it's a tried and true method for a lot of people. Uh, try doing that instead of smoking. But anyway, Smoking is just one really kind of extreme but common example we could talk about here because there could really be a lot of other examples as well. You know, what other things in your life do you need to, to work on? You know those things. I know the things in my life that I need to work on. And it's up to us to, to get honest about that and to do something towards that. So really that comes down to our self-discipline, doing the things we're supposed to be doing. A great example of doing something we should be doing every day is brushing our teeth. How many people listening to this are, have to be reminded to brush your teeth anymore. Hopefully, none of you. Uh, and the reason that you don't have to be reminded is because you can see the benefit in brushing your teeth every day. So we're supposed to brush our teeth twice a day. Uh, some people brush their teeth once a day, and unfortunately, there are probably some people who skip a day or two in between. And uh, again, that's not a great habit for, for many reasons. But, but uh, if you can get the discipline, have the self-discipline to do, do know what you to do what you know you're supposed to do, which is, br which is brushing your teeth every day, think about all the great things that can come out of that, uh, like reduced dentist cost, uh, dental bills, uh, uh, better smile, more compliments on your teeth and your smile, and being, being uh, willing to smile, uh, having better breath. So there, there's un untold uh, benefits from doing that. So number one is the way that you help your child through you developing your self-discipline is you doing, let them see you working on your self-discipline. So that's number one. Number two is you'll have more confidence when you teach life lessons to your children. And they'll benefit from that because they're seeing you do the right things too. So it's, it's kind of like related to that. So again, if I'm, if I'm a smoker and I know that that's not good for me and I tell my kids, don't ever start smoking, it's not good for you. And at the same time, I'm lighting up or I just, just put one out. It, it's really difficult for me to have any confidence in myself trying to teach my kids that they shouldn't be doing that because I'm still doing it. So it's important to make sure that your kids gain confidence in you as a parent. And that's good, good for their soul. It gives them confidence in their parent, which makes them feel better about, about you. So if you work on your self-discipline, 
you you will have more confidence when teaching your child uh, life lessons. Okay, number three, your self your self image will improve, and your child's opinion of you will increase. Now I know there's not a single person listening to this that wouldn't like to have their their child to be proud of them the way that they are proud of their children. And if you're not proud of your child, then let's work on that. And if your child's not proud of you, let's work on that as well. So I think if, if you're a normal person, I think you, you do care how by, about how your kids feel about you and you do want your kids to be proud of you. Well, if your self-image improves, your child's opinion of you will increase as well. See, if you don't like the person that you're looking at on the other side of that mirror, it's gonna be very difficult for your children to like that person either. Uh, they may respect you, but they won't, they won't like you to the same level as they would if, if they saw you uh, with a better self-image of yourself as well. So people that like themselves can like other people. Now, of course, we don't want to go too far with it and, and love ourselves, but we can like ourselves and like, like ourselves because of the self-discipline that we have in our lives. And that's, that's kind of where it starts. If you have good self-discipline, and you do things, you, basically you do what you say you're going to do, which is kind of another call in itself. That's like accountability, but it's a, it's a method of self-discipline or it's, a, it's, it's closely related to self-discipline. So if you, if you own up to the things that you know you should be doing and you follow through and do them, it, it can't help that your self-image will follow right behind that. And if your self-image improves, your kids are going to view you in a different light and they're going to be proud of you. All right, so that's number number three. Number four is you will have better relationships with your kids due to reduced stress. Now, reduced stress would come in the way of not having these unfinished things on your mind. How many of you listening to this have unfinished business right now that, that maybe you lost sleep over last night because you, you roll over tossing and turning thinking about what you had to do today, maybe what you should have done over the weekend and didn't get done, and it's still in your mind. Well, when those things happen and we, we load our minds up with a lot of things that we were, we're supposed to be doing, or we think about things that we shouldn't have done, like maybe we shouldn't have eaten that entire pizza and uh, followed it with a gallon of ice cream last night. Uh, that, that puts guilt on us and that, that puts stress on our minds and that can constrain our relationship with our kids, especially if our child comes in after school and has something exciting to share with us or has a problem to share with us and we're already stressed out about things in our own lives that are left unfinished. So if you work on your own self-discipline, then you'll have more energy to spend with your child and that will give you a better relationship. Okay. And the fifth and final one, and there are many more than five, but these are the top five in my mind, is your ability to get things done will multiply. You see, when you start putting some self-discipline into one area of your life, that's going to create momentum and that, that we call the big mo. When you get that momentum behind yourself, it, it'll start spilling over and you'll start looking for other areas that you can put more discipline into as well. So for myself, what I like to do many times is I'll start the year out, a brand new year, with a period of fasting between three and 10 days and sometimes 14 or 16 or 20 days. Uh, and the reason that I'm, the main reason I do that, of course, there are some other reasons as well. Obviously, during the holidays, we, we all tend to eat a little bit more and gain some weight. So knowing that I'm going to be starting that at the beginning of the year allows me to be a little undisciplined at the holiday time and not be guilty, not feel guilty for the fact that I'm going to eat an extra slice of pie or have, you know, an extra beer or something like that. Uh, and then when I start the year, I know I'm going to be getting right, right back down to where I was and then some. But more importantly, the reason that I do it is because it really starts my year off with supercharging my self-discipline. Because one of the hardest things for me, and I don't know if it is for anybody else listening to this, is eating. I love to eat. I love sweet things. I love uh, carb carbohydrates and uh, I love meat and potatoes. I, I just enjoy food. I'm a food connoisseur, I guess you could say. So it's, it, it takes a lot of discipline for me to keep myself from having that cheesecake at the end of lunch because, of course, that's what the, the wait, waiter or waitress is always going to say is, did you leave room for dessert? And typically I will say no. So every once in a while, because of my discipline, I will allow myself to have a dessert or I will stop at the grocery store when we pick up all of the good foods and on the way out, I'll pick up a candy bar. But it's not something that I do on a regular basis. So therefore, I am exercising my discipline. 
as a martial arts instructor, I think that's one of the most important skills that you can have as a martial arts instructor is to have that discipline because you are leading a lot of other people and they're, they're the, the speed of the group is determined by the speed of the leader. And if, if my discipline is, is not good, it's, very different, dis, it's gonna be very difficult for me to talk about discipline in front of my students when I know that I haven't been doing much of that myself. So you see, this is the same as, as parenting because being a teacher is kind of like being a parent in many ways. And uh, so as I was saying, that's my way of starting the year is, is with, with I want to kickstart my, kick start my discipline off by doing a period of fasting. And, and the reason I say is between 3 and 10 or 3 and 14 or 3 and 20 days, it depends on how I feel about it. You know, I'm going to have certain years where I really feel uh, great after the first three days and I want to continue it on. And other, day, other times I feel like three days I got enough out of it, I'm ready to go back to eating again. But that, that begins my year with a period of discipline for those 3 to, to 10 to 14 to 20 days. And that starts to spill over into a lot of other areas of my life. I, I start finding myself getting a little bit more heavily into my spiritual walk because I'm not eating. And it's a spiritual experience as well. And so during that reading, I feel different about my, my biblical reading and things. And so that, that kickstarts my discipline in that area. And then it kickstarts my discipline in the fitness area. I want to get myself back into good physical shape for the, the new year. And so just that one little discipline leads to the next one, to the next one, and to the next one. And so uh, your ability to get things done will multiply and spill over into other areas of your life, which will result in you being able to spend more quality time with your child. That's how your child benefits from this. You can even have your child help you with some of your, your tasks that you've set for yourself and kill two birds with one stone. So you'll be able to spend time with your child a little bit more and you'll be teaching them a new skill or, or a life lesson and give you time to, to chat and talk with them about things. And so they'll, they'll look at you a, a little bit differently and be more, more uh, it'll be like a family bonding thing. So this is, these are five ways that improving your self-discipline can help benefit your child. And so to recap them, number one is they will, you will inspire your child to do similar things in their lives. If they see you working on certain areas of your life and, and working on your own self-discipline, knowing that it's been a struggle for you to quit smoking or to stop eating uh, so much ice cream or whatever it is for you, uh, or sleeping so much or, or whatever it is you're doing, maybe working too much. In some, some people's cases, I know they work a little too much and never take any downtime. So that takes some discipline to do that as well. So it can go either way. Number two is you'll have more confidence when you teach your child life lessons because you're working on yourself. Number three, your own self-image will improve and that will force your child's opinion of you to improve as, as well. Number four, you'll have a better relationship with your child due to reduced stress. Facts prove, there are facts to, to support it, and facts prove that if you're disciplined and you get things done, you have less stress. You have more stress when th things are left undone, and that's, that's a fact. Uh, and number five, the, the fifth one, is your ability to get things done will multiply and spill over into other areas of your life, which will result in you being able to spend more quality time with your child. If you schedule things out and know exactly when you're going to do them or have an idea of when you're going to do them and you get them done, it frees your mind up. After those things are completed, you can, you're now free to do anything you want to do and that might be spending more time with your child. So these are your five things. Now I'm going to give you a call to action here. So listen, if you're listening to this, you're watching this, I know that you know where you need to improve. Stop and think about it for a few minutes. What areas of your life need to be improved or could be improved upon. Even if you're already doing very well, there's always room for improvement. That's the biggest room in the world, by the way, the room for improvement. So which areas of your life could use some improvement? So here's, a, here's five things to maybe spark your thinking on that. Number one, is it your health? Are you exercising? Are you, you uh, uh, doing the right things for your body? Number two, uh, your fitness, same thing. So your health could go toward your, your food, your intake, and smoking or not smoking, and you know, taking, uh, to it, drinking too much alcohol or, or what have you. Uh, number two is fitness. That would be exercising. Are you exercising on a regular basis? And if so, how often? Do you think you could do more? Is there something you should be doing you sh that you're not? Uh, number three, your relationships. If you're a parent, how are you, how's your relationship with your spouse? How's your relationship with your kids? Is there any relationship there that could be improved upon? Number four, your work ethic. Do you find yourself lazy? Are you a lazy person? And, or are you the opposite? Are you a workaholic and you do too much work? So there's a, you've got to find a good balance in there. Or number five, 
is your outlook on life positive or is it negative? Is that maybe an area that you could use some self-discipline in to improving to have more of a, a glasses half full type of mentality? And I'll tell you, I'm, I'm guilty of that one myself and I, I tend to think the glass is empty sometimes and I catch myself thinking like that and wow, I, 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 even though I teach this stuff, I still fall back into these things. And so that's when I have to discipline myself to start canceling out those thoughts and start replacing them with more glasses full, positive type th thinking. So here's your, your, your second call to action. The first one is, is you know you where you need, need to improve and that's to find out where that is, all right? Once you find that out, and actually even before you find that out, it probably won't take you long, but if, if it does, then you have just an extra couple of minutes in this. But if so, get on Amazon right this minute, not later, right this minute. As soon as we're off of this, this uh, podcast here, I want you to get onto Amazon and I want you to order yourself a little booklet like this. This is a little, uh, I forget what they're called, journal. There you go, a little success journal. I have another one here that's a little half, half this size. This one is for my ideas to, for these kind of podcasts. I, I come up with ideas and then I will, will uh, flesh them out into a complete script and, and as I get ideas I write in there and that's kind of what I'm doing with you right now. So I have one for this, but I also have one that is about half this size and it comes with a little strap on it and I can put my pen in there and that's for my exercise. I make sure that I log my exercise every day so that I can see where I'm lacking and just keeping track of it, that's a discipline in itself, but keeping track of the exercise goes a long way into helping me make sure that I get the exercise. So I want you to get onto Amazon right now and I want you to order yourself one of these things. They're, they're five bucks or less. This one maybe 10 or 15, this is a really nice one, but uh, the other one was like five bucks and start keeping track of the things that you want to see improve. That's your discipline. That's, that's what you need to keep yourself accountable. Something happens when you write it down and you start keeping track of it that, that changes a lot of things, all right? So if you have trouble with this, I, I want you to get on and buy that thing and then I want you to begin with just one act of self-discipline today. Don't, don't go and listing out one in each area or five or 10 of them, just choose one area. So here's some examples. If you know that it's your health and you know you could do better in that area. Maybe, maybe your goal could be drinking more water instead of uh, soda, soda pops or sweet tea or beer or wine, something like that. You know there's only a certain amount of time you, you put liquid into your body and instead of, having a, instead of that, reaching for that Diet Coke, reach for a glass of water. I know that sounds bland and blah, but that's really what your body craves. So reach for one glass of water instead of the, if you have five of them per day, reach for a glass of water once per day. Make your first glass, first drink of the day instead of it being Diet Coke, for example, or sweet tea, make that a full glass of eight, eight, eight ounces, 12 ounces, 20 ounces of water, whatever you can stomach. And then start with that. Just make sure once per week, I'm drinking a glass of water every morning. And that might be the first time you've done that in a long time. And then after uh, two or three weeks, you'll probably want to do more and you might start substituting a, the second drink or the first and last drink with a cup of water instead of you know, doing just the first one. So you're going to want to do more once you get started. As I said, it spills over into other areas. All right. So if, if, if health is, is a, an issue for you, maybe it is drinking more water. Or maybe it's stopping smoking. Maybe if you're a smoker and you're smoking, let's say, a pack of day and what is, I think that's 20 cigarettes, that you cut it down to 15 cigarettes a day to start with and you start cutting it down to 10 cigarettes a day and down to five. And then instead of those, in, in place of those other five, that's when you chew your gum. And then in place of the other 10, that's when you chew the second piece of gum and get it down to the point where you're smoking one, one per day and then get it to the point where you're not smoking any per day. But do that over the course of a period of time. But just make sure that it's like Lao Tzu, the, the famous Chinese philosopher said, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And that's my call to action to you today is to take that first single step and find that one area that you know you can be better at your discipline in because it is going to spill over into other areas. Just be careful not to overdo it and set too many goals for yourself. Again, I want you to set just one today. Find the one thing you know you need more discipline in and then set your plan Get your book, order it right now, and if you have Amazon Prime, order it right now and have it to you in an hour or two, and then start today on that habit, okay? Now, let's continue with the last couple of ideas here. Fitness might be a, a, an area for you. If, if you're like a lot of people, we sit a lot, and we don't exercise and play like we used to. Uh, so, it might be for you that you're going you're gonna to set your goals to start today with 100 push-ups and 100 sit-ups, right? No, that's far too many. If you try to do that, you're going to set yourself up for massive failure. Set your goal for something very, very simplistic. 
let's say five push-ups and five sit-ups today. If you can't do five regular push-ups, put your knees on the floor and do five of the, the modified push-ups and then set, get it to the point where you can do five and to then try one regular. And the, the next day, work it until you can get two regular, until you can get five regular push-ups. And then follow that with five sit-ups or five crunches or five sets of leg lifts, whatever you want to do, or five leg lifts, whatever you want to do. But keep it simple. One for the upper body, one for the lower body, once per day, twice per day maximum. I like to do my exercises in the morning when I get out of bed and right before I go to bed in the evening. So uh, I'll do push-ups in the morning and sit-ups and then I'll do some squats and some, some leg lifts and some stretching and things in the morning right, be right as I get up and get started and a lot of times I'll do that right before bed. In fact, I try to make it uh, a habit to do it right before bed because that's, that's really the ultimate goal with your discipline is to turn those activities into habits. And start, instead of making it so you force yourself to do these things, you just it becomes part of your habit, your daily routine. You know, bathing and brushing our teeth is something we had to train ourselves to do and, and it took discipline. And it probably took mom and dad yelling at us a few times and reminding us several more times to, to get us started in that, in that direction. And if it became a habit and it took with us, then we're still doing it today. And so I, I, I charge you to do the same thing in your life with other things, all right? Uh, let's see, relationships. Let's say that your, your goal is just to fix something in a relationship. Maybe you could do this. Maybe you could call one family member or a friend just every other day to say hello and tell them something nice. Or you could spend five minutes with your child and just be with them. Hugs and kisses optional. Okay, maybe if it's for you, it's your work ethic and you know that you, you, you need to improve your work ethic and do more work at work or at home, uh, whatever it is, work ethic. Maybe in, in, for you, you could, could pledge to turn off your phone and work for 45 to 50 minutes uninterrupted, just once per day, and then take a, a short five to 10 minute break and take a little, a, a little walk at that time. Maybe that's the time where you could have a glass of water and go for a five or 10 minute walk and kill two or three birds with one stone, but it starts with just one thing. So setting the goal to turn off your phone and, uh, and your computer and other things like that that are gonna be distracting you and get 40 to 50 minutes of work done at one, one tick. You'd be surprised at how much you can get done when there's no distractions. Okay, and then maybe the last one is, is your outlook on life. Maybe if you have a, a negative outlook on life and you're, you're you know, going through a, uh, some, you know, per a period of depression or you're sad a lot or uh, things just don't see seem to be going your way so you're kind of in a, in a bad mood, maybe you set your goal to listen to one positive podcast per day. This is one of those positive podcasts you can count on each week. But... Uh, I would recommend you doing one per day and you can find them free on YouTube and this one's free you can find find them on uh, iTunes and look for something like a short talk maybe a short TED talk that are 10 minutes or 15 minutes and set your your goal to start doing that once a day in the morning now there's a great resource for that if uh, if you're interested and you haven't been doing it already and it's a two-minute deal and it's called the Darren Daily uh, Darren Hardy is the guy's name D-A-R-R-E-N and then last name is H-A-R-D-Y, and he sends out a, mo a morning message that's approximately two minutes in length, sometimes a little bit more, but usually about two minutes in length, each and every morning, Monday through Saturday, and it's a great way to get your day started. So maybe you can start by doing that every morning and starting your day off with a positive thought so that that spills over into the rest of your day. And really, that's what it comes down to, folks, is... is in order to help our kids, we have to help ourselves. It's, it's very, very much like what they say on the, the airplanes, and it's a great analogy, so I use it a lot. And that is that when, when if, you've, if you've ever flown before, they always tell you that in case of an emergency that the uh, airbags will come down and to make sure to put yours on first before you put your child's on because it's very difficult to help your child if yours is not on. You might pass out in the process, and uh, that's not good. So it's just, it works the same way with being a parent. Uh, the best way to help our kids grow up to be healthy, happy, and, and wise and successful is to let them see us doing those things for ourselves first. We've got to take care of ourselves first. And, and spouses, you've got to take care of yourself. Wives, you have to take care of yourselves just as much as you take care of your family members. Uh, if you're like my wife, my wife takes care of everybody else first and then takes care of herself. So sometimes that's that can be counterproductive and so it's important that you know, that might be the thing for you if you're if you and if that uh, speaks to you and you're in that boat is maybe setting your, your goal to start doing even just once per week on Mondays or Saturdays or Sundays what just choose one day to take care of yourself now how do you take care of yourself maybe you go get a massage in a 30 minute or a 60 minute or a 90 minute or even a two-hour massage once per week on a Saturday and make dad pay for it 
Uh, maybe you take a bubble bath every Tuesday night from 8 to 9 p.m. and you relax. Or maybe you, you sit down and read a, a book for an hour without the kids being around. You're in a different room, totally quiet, or you're on the back porch, out in, in uh, uh, back porch with uh, you get nature behind you and you're just enjoying reading. Do something for yourself, but make sure you're, you're setting that goal. So that's my call to action today, is if you want to have, if you want to improve your, your benefit your child, you have to improve your own self-discipline because that it has a lot of crossover effects that maybe you didn't think about before. Now, if you enjoyed today's podcast and you got anything of value out of this, please like and share this and you know, comment below with your thoughts on it. And if you have anything that you'd like for me to discuss in the future in a future podcast, please uh, comment below on that as well and let me know what you'd like for that to be. And I'll, if I can be of help, I'd be happy to uh, conduct a podcast on that particular subject. That's all for today, and we'll see you next week. And I think next week we're going to go to a brand new day and time, and uh, I'll let you know more about that very soon.